Hello dear friends and welcome to the second episode. Today we are going to install the new clutch and gearbox back. Everything you need to know. Let's get begin. It's all possible to do it at home. I recommend you to make the alignment match marks on the clutch cover and flywheel just in case if you are going to reuse some clutch components. Remove clutch cover and disc. Loosen each set bolt one turn at a time until spring tension is released. Remove the set bolts and pull off the clutch cover with the clutch disc. Do not drop the clutch disc. Visual inspect condition of the flywheel. If necessary, clean the surface of the flywheel with a plastic wire brush. Inspect flywheel runout using a dial indicator. Set your wrench on a crankshaft pulley nut. Get your indicator ready. Maximum runout is 0.1 millimeter. If necessary, replace the flywheel. Keep turning until you're done whole circle. Clean the surface of new pressure plate with a alcohol or you can use an acetone. Just make sure it's dry and clean from any residues and uh, oils. It should be perfectly clean and dry for the best friction in the bolts. Insert clutch alignment tool in the clutch disc. Take care not to insert the clutch disc into the wrong direction. You see how I'm doing? That flat part of the clutch disc should face the flywheel. Align knock pin holes on the, with the holes on the clutch cover. Move alignment tool up and down, right and left lightly to center the disc. Start the first bolt, always start all bolts and nuts by hand. Apply some lock thread. Sealant. Put 
put the rest of the bolts. Start it by hand, as I said. Make sure your bolts are not going across the thread. Tie the six bolts in order. I'm showing. Start in the bolt located near the pin. Following the order, tighten the bolts at time equally. Checking that the disc is in center, tighten the bolts. Torque the bolts. I didn't want really to cut some clutch disk installation part because every single step is very important, it's taking longer, but then make sure everything is going right and you don't need to do that job again. And uh, as you can see that uh, following order of tightening bolts is a very important part, make sure pressure applied to the spring evenly and just Keep following and you will be good. All right, our bolts are good. Release your torque wrench, pull your stopper tool, and pull your electric clutch tool. As you can see, my clutch disk centered and it's ready for the transaxle installation. Apply release hub grease to the release fork and hub contact, release fork and push rod contact and release fork and pivot points.
plug this to the input shaft spline. Install release bearing and fork to transaxle. Install rubber dust boot. Check it out how it works. Clean transactor to so mounting bolts. Also, clean transaxle and uh, engine matching surfaces. Align kick pin holes with the pins when installing the gearbox. There's only two on top on each side. I've realized some thread sealant. Align the input shaft with a clutch disc and install transaxle back to the engine. You can use a hoist or crane or drag but this transmission is not heavy at all. I can do it by hand and it's easier for me just get like that. Just wiggle from side to side and trying to find the position when input shaft fits into the clutch splines and push it in and get those pins aligned with the holes yeah you'll be fine took me less than a minute temporarily tighten the transaxle mounting bolts Use a plastic millet to get it fit and start temporarily tightening the upper bolts and move down to the bottom bolts. Just play around and see how it goes. Don't push it, don't force it. Everything should go nice and easy, smooth. It will go in if everything's aligned properly. Do a little bit millet work. Now 
We also can apply a little bit of grease to the kick pins to make them slide inside the hole easier. But it's not necessary, total up to you. I didn't do it, mine went well. Little bit of time, tighten those bolts, go to the bottom. Another one on the top. You wanna watch that gap getting smaller evenly on the bottom and the top. You don't wanna over tight. As you can see, all those parts are mating there is no gap all tight didn't target yet but as you can see they're good to go support the transaxle with the jack don't put the pressure on a shaft and seal As you can see, everything's aligned and ready for the rest of the bolts. Right, we're putting the rest of the transaxle mounting bolts, they're all clean. I have a threadlock lubricant and we're going to install them. Always start bolts by hand, make sure that they go nice and easy, not over cross threading, and then you can talk. Go all the way around on cross pattern, start it with your ratchet. As soon as it's snag. Torque it transaxle mounting bolts with a torque wrench. Specs are there. The cross pattern on diagonal, top bottom, top bottom diagonal, like a star. Make sure you're tying all six of them. Check it out. You can put a paint mark. Connect engine left mountain bracket, torque it. Remove the jack, we don't need it, thank you. We will be on the way. Install lower suspension member, temporary tighten those bolts. Do not forget first put a rubber boot. Fit it inside the hole. The floor, pull it from outside, make sure it's pulled all the way. It should go. As you can see, there's a certain shape on the bottom of the boot, it should fit that little knot on the steering rack, it should be in place, and that's what you want to see. Put a retainer spring in. Place match marks on the slide yoke and intermediate shaft and uh, 
connect the parts, close them. Make sure that sliding yoke all the way down to that slot on the steering rack where that shaft is coming out. It can be only locked in one position, otherwise you won't be able to put the bolt through. Apply a white coat of uh, thread lock, and as you can see it's locked, it shouldn't slide back. And then you go all the way and tie the bolt. As you can see, that's very important safety part. You want to check, make sure it's in place and locked with the bolt. Torque them, tie them with the ratchet, and then go and torque it to the specified torque. Install plastic cover back. Put a carpet back, make sure it looks nice. Tight rear engine mount bolts and one nut to the specified torque. Tight front suspension member to the vehicle frame, torque bolts. Remove the strap, we don't need it anymore, take your support bar off, good, thank you, we don't need your help, we're good. Install the heat shield. Clean the CV axles, make sure the ends are clean, wipe them with a clean paper towel. That part goes inside the gearbox. Apply a little bit of grease for seal lubricant. It will help to get an axle inside the transmission and not damaging the seal. Helps lubricate in the seal. In the thread, with the wire brush. Apply a light coat of uh, anti seized compound to the splines. Install right and left side drive shafts.
temporary tighten the lock nut. Apply some light on anti seize compound to the threads. Connect ball joint to the steering knuckle and torque it. Always use the new clips. Connect the tight round end to the steering knuckle and torque it to the specified torque. Always use the new pins. If you remove it, don't use it again. This is a proper way to install them. Just follow the way I'm doing. Should look like this. Install new stabilizer bar links. Install the starter. Connect control shifter cables if you like this video and it's helpful to you please consider to subscribe and support my small channel it will really help me to grow I very appreciate that if you don't like it just keep watching Install the two clips to secure control cables to the transaxle.
connect speed sensor and reverse sensor connectors. Install wire harness bracket. Install clutch release slave cylinder. Connect ground cable. I move filler plug. Put transaxle oil, all information and specs up above. The funnel out and put the plug back. Took the plug. And the throttle body studs. There's one bolt. Install throttle body. To intake manifold, torque it properly. Install the gas uh, bracket. Gas cable bracket goes in front of the throttle body. Connect throttle body, coolant lines and electrical connectors. Put the hose clamps into the same position, then it won't leak. Install air cleaner housing bracket. Install air filter housing. Put the air filter. If you have a new one, replace it. That one is still okay. Put the rest of the parts. Tie the clump. Connect to vacuum and PCV lines.
connect the line to the third solenoid well, connect the third solenoid well and map sensors. Connect gas pedal cable. Tie the nuts. Install the radiator fan and the radiator. Connect all hoses back. Tie the clumps. <laughs> Connect radiator with an electrical motor. Install air duct pipe. Install for a member, hood hinge and horn. Install from plastic side shield. Check the vehicle, fire it up, see if it starts and runs. Look for leaks, any noises. It's running, it's running good. We did everything right. Tighten the axle nut, torque it there. Lock the nut. Install engine cover. We 
install bottom covers let's go for test drive good job guys we did it together it runs good shift smooth stays on gears all gears work there's no any noises it's all good thank you so much for watching if you like it subscribe for more interesting video if you have any questions leave any comments down below Thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye.